What was it like for you to be reunited with your wife in June of 2006 after a five-year separation? Uh, for me and even for her, we were together uh, again in spirit. So it is what welcome for both of us. She on my part and myself for, on her part. So we were together as if we were never separated and so on. So that, that's why there was no kind of a ceremonial uh, or even call some witnesses to bring us together. Nothing, nothing, nothing of that. Great, thank you so much. What is celibacy doing to the Roman Catholic priesthood? This is a bit of a long story, but I don't think that in this interview we can say all. Hmm? We do opposite. We will find a way how we can put it. A, you, you know that the, uh, the history of this celibacy, which became as a precept, a, it's just like a little string which was to be put to priesthood. It is not the essence of priesthood, nor does it constitute as an element that gives value to, uh, to, to, to uh, priesthood. But in the history, which we are going to show later on, yeah, in the history, this has come up, you know, and uh, called the angelic virtue and so on. Uh, seems to have lifted up, you know, the Catholic Church, who consider themselves above the Lutherans who marry, above the Anglicans who marry, above, against, uh, above the Orthodox who marry, and so, who are all, you know, Catholics and so on. So, in that kind of sense of superiority, uh, which they attribute to sanctity, that is higher, uh, that comes from uh, the, uh, the celibacy, you know, this they exaggerate without taking into consideration that it is marriage that produces saints. It's marriage that produces saints. And the saints are not only those who are religious, who have become priests, who have become sisters, and so on. No. The saints in their daily life, even as married, married men, there are many saints. And when we attribute some families who have given so many children eh, to the church, for as consecrated people, it is through the sanctity of the family itself. But why do they, when my own child becomes celibate, becomes a priest, become, feels that she, she's superior to me as, as a parent, as her father, as her mother, that she feels because she has a celibacy, she, is a, she believes that she is higher than ourselves. When, as a matter of fact, all the virtues that on top of, of course, when she becomes a religious, he becomes a priest. There is what you call gracia status. The person receives the necessary graces. But as a matter of fact, the initial, that is base, the base of her virtuous life tomorrow, is fundamentally that which she has learned from the family. And, and so you can't, you can't, you can't just contribute the sanctity of a priest because he has become a celibate and of the sister because she's celibate that their sanctity is by far higher than that of their father and mother because they are married, considering marriage as a low grade status of life. This is, this is a shame that that impression is made. And therefore, that whatever they consider the celibate, the angelic virtue, you know, it means the rest are called leite, and so on, the marriage are called leite, and that whatever they can do, they will never reach such height of sanctity as the angelic virtue of celibacy. I consider this pride. I consider this pride. The measure of sanctity is not only uh, the kind of, let's say, abstaining from sex and so on. It depends on the love you have. And that's where the judgment is going to come. How you have loved God and how you love your neighbor. For my daily perseverance in doing good and in the name of God and finding in my brother and my sister that same image of God and accepting the person as my own brother and so on. So the sanctity 
It's not only on this high class, so considered angelic virtue of, of celibacy, which is, which is certainly not. Look, it has been so uh, edifying to the priest, and some of them wept, and they gave this testimony that they had given up to go to church completely. They gave this testimony. And we had an old priest who was just sitting down, crying, crying. And Mary went and said, uh, why, why, why? He, said he could not believe that he was able to say mass finally, which he was forbidden for a long time. He couldn't say, he could not believe. This was like a dream to him. And this is what we are saying. So yeah, they are accusing me of pride. That myself, I'm proud. I'm imposing my thoughts on the Pope. I am acting, doing my things without the Pope and so on. But pride is exactly trying to make this celibacy as the virtue in the Catholic Church. At the cost of the loss of the so many priests and so many uh, family members who have been humiliated because everybody laughs at the failure of your son who was trying to be high and today he's one of us and so on. And then when he, he brings forth his children, they are called illegitimate because they have been produced from adultery, from concubinage and so on. It will take time to say, you as a child of a priest, they even not even allow you to be a priest tomorrow because you are coming from a daughter's priest who uh, never respected you know the church. And they, they have a lot of hesitation to think that even you, you are not going to persevere to be celibate. So they prevent someone who desires, who would like to expiate the sins of his own father by himself becoming a priest. And I'm going to put all my efforts, you know, to, to purify the lineage of, uh, of the priesthood, what, which I obtained, I feel it as a vocation for my own father. And so, no, no, we're not going to accept you. But is this, this is a small matter that you can condemn somebody forever. And these poor priests, they cannot at all appeal to anybody because the Catholic Church is power on earth. You are a nobody. You, can't, uh, you cannot appeal to anybody. But if they do this harm to you, that's all. You are finished. Is this what Jesus said? That we must be able to love one another. And whatever to do, you do to the least of my bread, you, should, you do it to me. Are these priests not, not my, my, uh, uh, the, the, the little ones to whom we do all this? Why are they considered, you know, as people who, who, who cannot be looked at as people who have got a name, 